Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel or if you're new my name is Orla and today I'm going to do another Madrid video so if you haven't seen my previous Madrid videos I'll link them up here somewhere wherever they go. One was about the pros and cons of living here in Madrid and another one was about the um, cost of living and what I spend in a week living in Madrid so I'll link those up here if you're interested as well but today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of living in Madrid versus Barcelona. I'm sure people are going to type Madrid versus Barcelona and expect some sort of football results or something. Have they even played together? Who knows? Um, but they're going to get this video instead. So I hope you enjoy. So a bit about me, I've been living in Madrid for over six years now. I technically have never lived in Barcelona, but wait, before you click off this video, I've visited quite a few times and I have a lot of friends who live in Barcelona, or I have friends who lived in Barcelona who've now moved to Madrid, or vice versa. So I know a lot about the pros and cons of each places through either my own experience or word of mouth from my friends. So yeah, I'm going to break this video down into categories and let's begin with category one. The cost of living. So, everybody's favourite subject, and with inflation and all of these weird things going on in the world at the moment, the cost of living everywhere seems to be increasing. It's definitely something I've experienced in Madrid over the last couple of years. Actually, I'm flat hunting at the moment, and the prices now, compared to a couple of years ago, are not ideal. Um, but we're going to break it down by each place. So, in Madrid, in general, the flats are a little bit cheaper, and the cost of living in general is a little bit cheaper. Um, which is strange because obviously it's a capital city so you'd assume it is more and obviously all of this is dependent on where you live now and what is expensive or cheap to you. If you're from like a northern European country obviously everything in Spain's going to seem super cheap. If you're from another part of the world even Spain's going to seem expensive to where you live. So obviously this is all dependent on you. So because Barcelona is really the more touristic city prices are, are a little bit more expensive and from what I've seen um, looking at flats Flats in Madrid seem to be a smidge cheaper than Barcelona. Again, it depends on the area you're looking to live in, it depends what you want to be nearby, you know, it depends on a lot of factors. But Madrid, for example, and Barcelona too, are very much like neighbourhood based. I'll put a few little maps up here if you like. Um, so it's not really like London, for example, where you have Zone 1, or what do they call it in London? Zone 1? Ring 1? Obi Wan? My dog will come if I say that too many times. But yeah, let's say zone. So they have like zone one, two, three, four, and it kind of gets, you know, slightly more affordable. Um, as you go out and the centre is the most expensive. Here in Madrid we have different neighbourhoods where the prices can really vary. Um, you know, there's more expensive neighbourhoods up in the north that aren't exactly central um, and it kind of depends on that. But in general, if you're looking for a property, Idealista is the main website here to look for places to rent or to buy. So I'll pop a link to that in the comments below or in the little, little box. I'm talking a lot with my hands here. Ooh. And one thing I'd note about flats is because Barcelona is more of a popular city with tourists, there is a lot of problems with Airbnbs. So often I've had friends who've moved into a flat, everything looks good, and then it's a couple of weeks in when they realise the flat next door to them is actually being used as an Airbnb. So every sort of couple of days there's new people, they're on holiday, they're making noise. Luckily, I mean that is a problem in Madrid, like it is in a lot of cities kind of experiencing gentrification and all things like that, but luckily it's not as big of a thing here, um, whereas it is more so in Barcelona, so that is something to consider and maybe ask about your neighbours if you're moving into a place in Barcelona and make sure you do your research because I've had many an unhappy friend who have had to move because of things like that. And then to rub salt into the wound, uh, that means that a lot of the rent prices have increased because landlords, there's any landlords watching? Um, but no, uh, kind of yeah. Uh, but yeah, they've decided or they've realised they can get way more money for their property by putting it on Airbnb. And there is a lot of, I think a couple of years ago there was a big, um, kind of situation in Barcelona with um, protests because of Airbnb and a lot of kind of anti-tourist sentiment, uh, which was a whole thing. So I'll link again that down below in the comments if you're interested. And then in terms of other things like food, I'd say food and restaurants are kind of on par, more or less. And then with public transport, Madrid is slightly cheaper. So I have my facts and figures here, if you don't mind me referencing them. Um, I pay 54, um, sorry, let me, re let me rearrange. 
I pay 54.66 per month for an unlimited travel card. It's called an abono, which is a card which has your picture on it. It's only for you and you can use um, the metro, the buses and the light trains. Um, unlimited per month, which is a great deal. And if you compare that to other prices in other places, it is really, I say affordable, but affordable for people who need to go in and out of work. Again, that's all relative. Um, and the Metro in Barcelona can vary between 40 a month to 113, depending on the zones. So it's a bit more of a difference there. But again, it depends where you want to travel to and everything like that. So in terms of cost of living, Madrid, you're getting this one point. Maybe the blue side can be Team Madrid and Barcelona can be the white. So we'll go one nil. So unless you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, or maybe you've won the lottery, or maybe you've gambled your life savings on some sort of weird crypto coin that's now paid off and you're rolling in it. Unless you're one of those people, I'm assuming you are coming to either Madrid or Barcelona to work. So obviously again, this depends on what field you are in. I would say, as most of my friends have said, and nearly everyone I've met here in the last six years, Depending on the job you have, Madrid is definitely not a place to save a lot of money and it's also not a place necessarily to climb a career ladder. Again, there's a few exceptions, like if you come over here with an international company on like an expat package where you're getting a really good salary or maybe your company is like a Scandinavian company who has an office in Madrid and you're getting paid the same as your counterparts in another country. Obviously, those are the exceptions and they're probably getting a great wage. But if you do not speak Spanish natively or if you don't have a super high level and you're wanting to work in English, most jobs are English teaching um, and then a lot of people kind of graduate out of teaching into copywriting or into editing textbooks and things like that but if you're looking to make a career here and you don't speak Spanish and you're hoping you can get by on just English it isn't really that possible and um, there's a lot of multinational offices here now and there are a lot of international companies here but most of them still need you to be able to speak Spanish so it's not like another country you could move to for example and get by purely on English so obviously if that is something you're interested in you do need to make learning Spanish a high priority and to add to that, I would say Barcelona is probably a bit more international. So maybe you could find a job there that, you know, maybe something in tourism that you could do with just English. But again, you'll probably need some sort of a Spanish level. So for this, I'm going to give them both a point because it's kind of a draw. So let's go. Let's go to one. OK, so let's have a look at attractions and things to do. So both Madrid and Barcelona have endless activities and things to do. I mean, there's so many things to do in Madrid, often I'm overwhelmed by choice. And if you have a little bit of uh, indecision like me and decision fatigue, you end up having so many choices in front of you that you go, do you know what? I might just do nothing. Um, well, no, I do do quite a lot of activities. I do like an exhibition and a pop-up and things like that. But both cities are great for that. Obviously Madrid, for example, has some of the most renowned museums in the world. If you are an art fan, we have El Prado, Reina Sofia, the Tissin. We have loads. We also have a lot of modern art galleries or exhibitions. Like a couple of weeks ago, I went to uh, the Klimt um, interactive kind of digital exhibition, which was really fun. And they had, you know, interactive things you could do, like drawing your own um, pictures and having them projected onto the ceiling and stuff. And that was 11 euros a ticket, um, which again is pretty affordable. Um, and a lot of the other museums are free or they're free at certain times of the week. And there's the Telefonica Museum, which always has free exhibitions on. So if you're into kind of art and cultural stuff, you're gonna be spoiled for choice. Um, there's a lot of bars, obviously, restaurants, nightclub scenes going on, and things like Meetup and is the other one Fiverr? Fiverr? I think so. Have loads of groups you can join, and there's honestly endless chances to meet people here. It's a great city to connect. About a week ago, a woman in a coffee shop just randomly started to talk to me, and we got on really well, and we're going for coffee this week. So um, you can really meet people, and people are very open to meeting people here, which is really great. So if you're worried about friends and making new connections, honestly, Madrid is a great city to meet new people. So there's loads of things to do. And then obviously, moving on to Barcelona. Again, there's a reason it's so popular with tourists. There's so many things to do. You know, you have so many of Gaudi's buildings. La Sagrada Familia is stunning. You have Park Güell. You have, again, loads of bars restaurants, nightlife, day trips you can make from Barcelona. So again, there's, you know, loads of things you can do there. Plus, it has the beach, which is a massive advantage. Um, 
and again you know because it is more touristy if you live there I've had friends who say that you know there's a lot of stag do's and or like bachelorette parties and things like that going on which means it's quite busy and maybe if that's not your cup of tea then obviously there's quieter neighborhoods to live in. Madrid does also have that but it is slightly less popular with tourists and the tourists do tend to stick to the very center so I can go a day or so easily without actually hearing anyone speak English you know on the metro or on the streets or things like that but in Barcelona you are going to find more of like an international crowd so again it depends on what you're really looking for but both places have loads to do but I'm gonna have to give this point to Barcelona which makes it 2-2 just because it has loads of stuff and the beach so you know gotta give it that point I grew up near the coast with the wind in my hair so tutu and linked to the beach and the wind in my hair let's talk a bit about the weather so Madrid summers are no joke luckily it's kind of cooled down a little bit now as I'm filming this um, because I tried to film this last week actually and I had to stop because it was about 39 degrees and my air conditioner makes a load of noise so I had to turn it off otherwise you'd have been ill, it was a disaster. So the summers get really hot here, August is like a ghost town in Madrid, everybody leaves to go and spend time in their family house or you know with other people on the beach like Madrileños uh, just completely escape. So the Madrid summer is no joke, it's too hot um, and in winter you know, again, cold is relative. Before Spain, I lived in Moscow, and obviously the winters there are freezing. You know, we have snow nearly every day. Temperatures, I think I think the coldest temperature I experienced was minus 27 or minus 28, if I remember. So in comparison to that, of course, it isn't so cold in Madrid, but you do still need, a, you know, a coat and a scarf and gloves and all of that stuff um, in winter, and people are normally surprised. But yeah, it does get cold. And then spring and autumn are quite short as seasons, but very beautiful. We have, like, lots of blossom trees and things like that. Um, and Barcelona is pretty much the same, but less extreme. So it isn't as hot in summer, um, it isn't necessarily as cold in winter, however, you do have the wind breeze, so again, for example, growing up near the coast, sometimes the temperature wasn't that low, but because of that wind, it did feel kind of cold. Um, so yeah, Barcelona in terms of the weather is slightly better, I think, although it is slightly more humid because of the sea. So I think that's personal preference, really, but maybe I'm going to give that point to Barcelona, just because Madrid summers are hell. So it's 2-3. Come on, Madrid, pull up your bootstraps. Okay, so let's have a look at work-life balance. Um, in general, in Spain, I mean, you know, it's kind of world knowledge, I think, that Spaniards like to have a good quality of life. They really value family time, which is great. You know, that can sometimes make it harder as someone who's a foreigner to come into the country and infiltrate that bubble because Spaniards tend to have like family very close, friends, work friends and then other people. That can be a bit of a, of a problem but you know Spaniards value family time really highly. There are so many bank holidays here which is great if you get paid bank holidays. It's not obviously if you don't so that depends on your job situation but the work-life balance you know people want to go out on the weekends, in the evenings terraces are full and you know because of the weather being better and the day feeling longer because of that people you know go out after work really often it's not as if they're going straight home to hide in their house because it's really cold like in the UK for example um, so for both places I'd say the quality of life is really good again it depends on how much you earn and how much you can afford to spend out but I would say compared to other places I've lived in I definitely am able here to go out for drinks more to go to exhibitions more I think as public transport it's more affordable than other places. I have that little bit of extra cash to, you know, maybe go out for coffee a bit more often than I would in other places. So again, this kind of depends a lot on what you prioritise. If you're a big alcohol drinker, I'm not a big drinker, so obviously I don't necessarily need to go out and spend a lot of money on wine and things. So again, that's kind of personal preference. What I would say for both cities though, is that the Spanish workday is very different from, for example, the UK workday, which is more or less nine to five. Here it can be sometimes like nine to seven with a two hour break in the day for lunch. They have a super long lunch hour, which is almost the leftover from um, previous times when they would have a siesta in the middle of the day, which isn't really popular anymore, to be honest, maybe in small pueblos and small towns, but in, in major cities, people aren't having a siesta every day. Maybe you'll find yourself working a longer work day, but with a bigger lunch break. And again, that's preference. It depends on um, what you like. Luckily, I don't have that type of schedule because for me, I would find that a little bit 
kind of too much having such a long work day um, I'm able to break mine up in a different way which suits me better um, so for this I'm going to say it's a point for each maybe so I can't remember what I was on is that 3-4? it's 3-4 Okay, I can't believe I've gone this far into the video without talking about food. So I'm going to talk a bit specifically about the vegan food scene because I am vegan so it's important to me to be able to find vegan ingredients and go to vegan restaurants and cafes and things. Uh, Madrid in general has new things popping up all the time. Like I can walk past a street I'm in really often and there's a new coffee shop or there's a new restaurant um, which is great and the vegan scene in the last six years I've been here I've only been vegan for three and a half of those six years six years Sean Connery has made an appearance um, has kind of skyrocketed and it's only getting better and better which is so good to see especially in a country that's obsessed with ham on so that's really positive and it's great um, and I would say there's definitely more room for restaurants that are in the middle because you kind of have on one end of the scale the vegan junk food which I love but you don't want every day and then on the other end of the scale acai bowls which again are nice actually I prefer the smoothie bowl but whatever you get my point you want something in the middle um, but things like that are opening, um, which is great. And same with Barcelona, every time I visited and the vegan friend I have who lives there says there's so many options, which is brilliant. And you know, things are opening up all the time. I would say maybe Barcelona having that international crowd has maybe more different types of vegan cuisine compared to Madrid. Um, but then again, Madrid has maybe some more like traditional Spanish style tapas turned vegan which i haven't seen in barcelona and in terms of prices it's definitely more affordable i think to be vegan in madrid any kind of trendy cool place i've gone to in barcelona seems to be that much more expensive than their equivalent here in madrid so for that i'm going to give the point to madrid so we're even stevens before for all oh, the tension's killing me okay so let's move on to something that's very important which is inclusivity so both Madrid and Barcelona feel like very inclusive places for the LGBTQ plus community. Here in Madrid you have Troika, which is known as the gay village. You know, you can often see, even in more residential areas like mine, you know, pride flags hanging out the window even when it's not June. And there's overall a feeling of it being an accepting city. Obviously you're always going to have bigoted people who think the opposite, you're going to get that everywhere unfortunately, but as a city and in comparison to other places, Madrid definitely feels very welcoming and some gay friends I've had who I've spoke to who are a couple walking around on the street holding hands always feel very accepted and not judged. And I see couples all the time in the street kissing, holding hands and in general, Spanish people don't have a problem with PDA at all, so you see that really often and people don't bat an eyelid, which is really great. Um, and in Barcelona, I'd say it's pretty much the same, which is brilliant, so a point for each on that score. However, in terms of racial equality, again, like so many other countries in the world, unfortunately, we're, we are just not there yet in Spain at all, and in fact, we're actually a bit more behind on inclusivity and using the correct language and not being microaggressive. Um, we're just not there yet here in Spain, unfortunately. Um, obviously, as a white woman, I don't have personal experience as of it happening to me. Um, but I have had friends of colour here who have experienced racism, and whether that be in the workplace, whether that be a friend, somebody on the street. Again, this is relative to your situation, you know, she, unfortunately, like many people of colour, has always experienced that, so for her, it was like another day at the office. Obviously, I can't speak on authority with the situation, so I will be putting some links in the info box down below um, of some articles I found and blog posts and things like that, um, and also groups here in Madrid that you can join. Um, and yeah, hopefully they'll be able to provide you with a bit more information than I can. But yeah, Spain really needs to step it up with their racial inclusivity. So Madrid in general, I looked at a ranking of safe cities and Madrid ranks quite highly on that in comparison to other places. Luckily in general, apart from some catcalling, which again, we shouldn't minimise, but that's a whole topic for another video. But apart from catcalling and things like that on the odd occasion, I do feel quite safe here. Um, I feel safe being out at night. Um, again, I think that's more to do with the fact that everybody's still out at night, you know. You can be on the metro or a bus at one o'clock in the morning and it's still really busy and there's still families with kids out and about at that time. So you don't feel as worried or anxious as you would be, for example, if I was in Manchester on my own at that time of night. So Madrid feels like a safe city. Obviously, you're going to get 
crime everywhere and you're going to have pickpockets and things like that in really touristic areas. However, with Barcelona, even though it ranked higher on that list for being safe, the friends I've had who live there have said they haven't felt as safe as they did in Madrid, for example. Again, I think this could be linked to the higher rate of tourism, meaning there's more pickpockets and people who are, you know, trying to steal laptops and things like that. But unfortunately, one of my friends was quite violently mugged for her laptop um, and she never experienced anything like that here after living here for five years and then Barcelona for two. Again, that's one experience, so, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. I would say Madrid feels like a slightly safer city. So for that, what are my points on now? Five, five, six, five? I think Madrid's in the lead. Okay, and our final category is just extra miscellaneous things. Um, so yeah, I would say all of this again is just my experience, my friends' experiences, my advice. In general, I would say I prefer Madrid as a place to live and Barcelona as a place to visit. Barcelona just has more like holiday vibes to it. Um, maybe that's because of the beach. Um, but I do think Madrid is a really good place to live. It has everything you want. But then again, Barcelona, as we've seen, has great advantages too. Um, in terms of political situations, like again, unfortunately, with a lot of places in the world, there is a slight rise in the right in both places. But the Catalonian independent situation in Barcelona has been quite like a political issue for a while now that everybody in Spain has like an opinion on. And again, some of my friends who have been living in Barcelona have experienced situations where they've spoken Spanish, for example in a restaurant, and the person has replied in uh, Catalan, but they don't speak Catalan, and it was this big whole thing. So maybe if you're not looking for any issues like that, that's kind of a bit of an annoying thing. But again, you know, Barcelona has so many advantages as a city, but my opinion would be Madrid is a great place to live, Barcelona is a great city to visit. So anyway, that's everything from me. I've waffled on for long enough. I hope this was informative and interesting. And yeah, check out my other Madrid videos. And if you're interested in subscribing, that would be great to have you along for the ride. I don't know what ride, a roller coaster probably with my upload schedule. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you again around these parts soon. Take care and see you soon. Bye. Thank you.